if your Shopify store doesn't load fast, you are losing sales. And no, that's not dramatic. That's the truth. Slow websites kill conversions. And even with AI changing how people search, your website experience still matters. A lot. Because when people land on your store, they expect speed. Fast stores still win and slow ones still lose. So let's fix your store. And by the way, you don't need to be a developer to do that. I will walk you through practical, easy fix that anyone can do. So let's start. Let's start by talking about why speed matters. Speed impacts everything, especially your customer experience. Customers don't like slow websites. They leave them, especially on mobile. Also, they don't easily trust a slow website. A fast website looks more professional and more trustworthy. And yes, also Google still prefers fast websites. I know that most people are now using AI to search for the things they want to buy, but they still need to go to the website to do the purchase and to check the product. So your website experience still matters and a lot. Speed is about improving your store experience and experience is what sells. Now that you know why speed is important, let's talk a little bit about Shopify speed report and what it means. From your Shopify dashboard, head to online store and to your themes. And in there, you will see your speed report. Basically, you will see three different metrics. The first one is the LCP, and it stands for largest contentful paint, or simply put, how fast your main banner or image loads. The second metric is IMP, and it stands for interaction to next paint, or simply how quickly your store responds when someone clicks or taps. The third metric is CLS, and it stands for cumulative layout shift, and it shows whether elements jump on your page when it's loading. These metrics are based on real user experience and they really matter. Now, Shopify gives you these metrics, but they don't give you advices on how you can fix or improve them. So at the end of this video, we are going to see together a real speed report from Shopify. So at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a real Shopify speed report and we are going to analyze it together. And I will show you how to turn these metrics into actions that you can take to improve your store experience. And no, you don't need to be technical and you don't need to be a web developer to do any of these things. But first, let's make your store faster. Point number one, delete unused apps or even better, lower the number of apps you are using. This is one of the biggest reasons why your Shopify store might be loading slow. Even if you are not using the app visually, it still might be loading scripts in the background, thus slowing your store, especially on mobiles. That's why you must remove any app that you are not using. And not only that, I recommend you to look at the list of apps you are currently using and to make sure that none of these apps can be replaced by native Shopify settings. Shopify have improved a lot in the past few years, and now it offers a lot of embedded options and settings that can replace a lot of apps. So do this exercise and make sure that any app that you keep is a must. Now, if you want to take this a little bit further and you want to make sure that you have actually get rid of any app that you are not using and you have cleaned your website 100%, I recommend you to take this one small advanced step. You just need to go to your theme code and you can find this under online store, themes, and you click on edit code. You head to your theme.liquid and in there, you need simply to search for any line that has your app name in it. And in there, you need to search for leftover files from unused apps. Well, yeah, even if you removed your app, there might still be some codes that are slowing your website even after removing the app. So this step is really important. So you go in there, you search for the leftover files and you remove them. And if this seems a little bit complicated, you can always hire a web developer to do this small task for you. And a small note in here, always duplicate your theme and make sure that you have a backup before you start playing around with the code. Apps don't always clean up after themselves, so this step is actually very important. Second, choose a theme that matches your needs. Not all themes are the same. Some themes are super fast and the other are loaded with 10,000 features that you might not use. Don't think about having a fancy theme, you need to have a smart one. Choose a theme that have the features that you need and you might need in the near future and that's it. And whenever you are checking a theme, make sure to test the demo store on PageSpeed Insights to make sure it loads fast before buying it. And always, always, 
prioritize teams that are built for speed and for mobile first. And one final recommendation, always choose teams from the Shopify theme store. Teams there are well vetted and chosen by Shopify, and they are always up to date with Shopify latest updates. I know there are so many amazing themes outside the Shopify theme store, but I prefer to be on the safe side and to pick one from there. Third, compress and resize your images. And I can't emphasize enough on how important this step is. Large images are silent killers for any website speed. So here are some things that you must respect before uploading your next image. First, make sure to always use JPEG for images and only PNGs when you need a transparent background. Keep your images under 500 kilobytes and never, never exceed one megabyte per image. You can always use free tools like iloveimg.com in order to compress and resize your images before uploading them. Also, I recommend you to resize your images before uploading them. And resizing an image is a little bit different than changing the file size. So the file size is about how many megabytes the image is, but the resizing is about how many pixels the image is. So if your banner, for example, is only 1,200 pixels, you don't need to upload a banner with 3,000 pixels. And also you can use so many free tools online to do that. Now, if you have already uploaded a lot of images to your Shopify store and you don't want to go back and re-upload each one of them, you can always use one of these Shopify apps in order to compress and resize your images. These apps will automatically compress and resize all the images that you have in your store and this is going to make a big difference. 4. Simplify your store homepage Your homepage doesn't need to do everything. It just needs to do enough in order to get people to click. So here is a smart homepage layout that you can use. First, an image banner. Second, a value prop or trust section. Then a bestseller collection. Then maybe a list of your collections or some featured collections. Then a small about us section. And finally, some testimonials and social proofs. And that's it. No need to include fancy things like sliders or autoplay videos or Instagram feeds unless they are a must. Less is faster and faster converts better. Fifth, limit fonts. Fonts seem small, but they actually affect a lot your loading speed. Each custom font file is one more thing your customer's browser need to download. So here is a simple fix for this. Use only one or two fonts. One for the heading and one for the body and that's it. Stick to fonts already included in your Shopify theme. They usually load faster. And if you must add a font, make sure it's a font from Google Fonts or Adobe. They are usually well optimized and well supported. And finally, and most importantly, avoid the use of any font apps. They usually load extra code and they will slow down your website. Sixth, and these are some bonus advanced optional things that you can do. We've already covered the basic things that you need to start with. But if you want to double down on your store speed and you want to make sure that you didn't leave any stone unturned, the coming points are for you. First, remove any custom sections or features that you have added. Let's say, for example, previously you have added sections like announcement bars, comparison tables, before and after, and so on. Even if you are no longer using these sections, they are still there and their codes are loading. That's why it's super important to remove any feature you are not using anymore. So go to your theme and remove any custom section that you are not using anymore. But before doing this, don't forget to duplicate your theme to make sure that you have a backup. Second, turn on lazy loading. This means that images are going to load when someone is scrolling, not before. And this can greatly help your website speed. Usually most advanced themes have this option already embedded. Sometimes they will ask you if you want to do the lazy loading or not. I always recommend you to go with it. Finally, minify your theme code. And this is where you might need the help of a web developer to get this done. This step is extremely important if you are using a custom section. Minifying your code theme means making the code lighter and faster without changing anything in the design. All of these three advanced points are optional, but if you are aiming for a super fast website, you must do them. Now that you know all the things that you can do in order to improve your Shopify speed store, let's move to my dashboard to analyze together a Shopify speed report and let me show you how you can turn this data into actions. From your Shopify dashboard, I want you to go to online store and themes. And in here, you will see your store speed report. And as you can see, we have three metrics, LCP, 
INP and CLS. We have talked a little bit about these metrics at the beginning of this video, but now we are going to tackle them in details. And as you can see, Shopify is telling me if my metrics are good or excellent or moderate, so I can know how to improve them. Let's start by the first metric and it is the LCP. And this metric tells you how fast your biggest element like banner or image loads. So what's good? Anything that's below 2.5 seconds is good. Anything that's between 2.5 seconds and 4 seconds needs improvement. But if your LCP is below 4 seconds, this is a very poor performance and you must be fixing this now. So what are the things that you can do if your LCP is higher than 2.5 seconds? First, resize and compress your image banner. Make sure that the file size is not exceeding 500 kilobytes or maximum 1 megabyte. Second, avoid large sliders and video headers. And finally, make sure that your above the fold layout is minimal. The second metric we have is INP, and it tells you how quickly your website acts when someone clicks or taps. So let's say someone added to cart or opened a menu. It is good if it's under 200 milliseconds. It needs improvement if it is between 200 and 500 milliseconds. And it is poor if it's more than 500 milliseconds. So what you can do to fix it? Remove or replace heavy apps like chat widgets, reviews, pop-ups, and so on. Second, clean up old codes or unused features. And finally, avoid animation or effects that slow clicks. The final metric you have is CLS, and it's going to tell you if the elements are jumping on your page when it's loading. It's usually caused by images or fonts loading later. It's good if it's under 0.1. It needs improvement if it's between 0.1 and 0.25, and it is poor if it's more than 0.25. So how you can fix it? Set fixed widths and heights to all of your store images. Second, stick to one or two fonts and avoid any app that loads fonts after the page loads. And by the way, Shopify offers a very nice feature. When you access any of these metrics, graphs, you will see a track of all the things that you have done and might have affected these metrics. So let's say, for example, you have removed an app or added a new app. You can see if this action has actually changed this metric, whether negatively or positively. So in this way, you can track the changes and know what's improving or maybe what's lowering your speed, your store speed. This is actually extremely important because while you are optimizing your store speed, sometimes it's difficult to decide whether this change was positive or negative. With this timeline in here, with this graph in here, you can keep track of all the changes and make informed decisions based on this. So this is everything you need to know about how to speed up your Shopify store. Speed is not a tech thing, it's a sales thing. And 90% of the things that you must do to improve your Shopify store speed are not even code related. You can do them by yourself without the need to hire anyone. You just need to make cleaner, smarter decisions and that's it. And since you are interested in improving your Shopify store, I highly recommend you to check this video on my YouTube channel where I share with you advanced tips that will help you to improve your product pages, thus improve your Shopify store conversion rate and your sales. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you in the next one.